and we select it, I think, in the human animal for uh, what I call a dual reproductive strategy, a tremendous drive to uh, fall in love, uh, form a pair bond, and also a restlessness in long relationships and a tendency to divorce and remarry. So we've got these three different brain systems. And um, the one I decided I would study is romantic love. I started out by, first I want to tell you what, what happens when you fall in love, and then what we did in the brain and, and what we found. <clears throat> the first thing that happens when you fall in love is a person takes on what I call special meaning. As a truck driver once said to me, he said, the world had a new center, and that center was Marianne. And you know, this person just becomes the very center of your life. Uh, um, George Bernard Shaw actually defined it a little differently. He said, love consists of overestimating the differences between one woman and another. <laughs> and indeed, that's pretty well what happens. <laughs> then you focus your attention on them. You know, uh, everything about them is special. You can list what you don't like about them, but you sweep that aside and then focus on, on what you do like about them. Um, you um, feel intense elation when things are going well. That's dopamine. A mood swings into the despair when things are going poorly, real mood swings. An intense amount of energy. You can walk all night and talk till dawn. Um, you crave them. It's an emotional craving. It's an, a craving for emotional union. I mean, you, you'd like to go to bed with them, but what you really want them to do is call you up and send an email. Uh, invite you out, uh, start the emotional uh, connection with you. Uh, there's a lot of other characteristics associated with um, intense romantic love. Um, not only the sex drive goes up, but uh, you become sexually possessive. Um, you know, if you're just casually sleeping with somebody and, uh, and um, they sleep with somebody else, you, you often really don't care. But if you're in love with somebody, you big time care. It's called mate guarding uh, in the animal community. And uh, uh, when you're madly in love, you become very sexually possessive. But I think the most um, important characteristics of romantic love is this intense motivation to win this person, um, the craving for emotional union. And the single greatest characteristic that I, I, um, I think is a part of romantic love is obsessively thinking about this person. As a matter of fact, before I put these people in the MRI machine, my first question to them was always, um, uh, how long have you been in love? Because uh, I wanted them crazy. And they got to be crazy <laughs> because these machines are expensive and uh, it's a very time consuming for everybody. Um, um, but uh, my second question was, um, what percentage of the day and night do you think about your sweetheart? Um, and th uh, the people who said, well, I go to bed thinking about her. I wake up in the morning uh, thinking about him. Um, when, when you get, you're in the middle of that full-blown obsession is when we wanted to put you in the, in the machine. My last question to these people was always the same. There's a real emotional and physical dependence. You become extremely dependent on this individual. So the very last question I would ask them was, um, um, would you die for him or her? And I would be staggered at how regularly and how rapidly these people said that they would die for uh, the person that they were in love with. So anyway, so um, then I had to make sure that uh, romantic love was um, universal. Uh, I had a friend who had looked in 170 societies, found uh, evidence of romantic love in every one of them. Love songs, uh, love poems, <coughs> love magic, uh, myths and legends about love, uh, <coughs> suicides and homicides because of love or they simply just told the anthropologists that they were in love. So there's no negative evidence anywhere in the world. Um, I've seen the oldest love letter. It's in a uh, museum case in the archaeology museum in Istanbul. It's written on a lump of clay um, in cuneiform. I don't know what it says, but I think we all know what it says. Uh, it probably says, you know, email me uh, uh, <laughs> now. <laughs> um, and. Um, so uh, I've lost my train of thought. I'm trying to do this without my notes. Um, so anyway, I then decided I would um, create my own um, questionnaire about romantic love to make sure for myself that this was 
something you found in every culture, although there was all this evidence. So I, I created a questionnaire about romantic love, and I gave it to 437 Americans and 402 Japanese. And uh, as it turns out, uh, on over 80% of the questions, uh, uh, there were no differences. There were no differences, real differences between men and women. Uh, men fall in love faster than women do. Uh, three out of four people who kill themselves when a relationship is over is a man, not a woman. Uh, but the, that intense feeling of romantic passion doesn't seem to be different between the sexes. Um, my population over age 45 were, showed just as much romantic love as those under 25. This is a brain system like the fear system. It can be triggered at any age. Uh, in fact, before I, w I put any of these kids into the machine, I put myself in. And as it turns out, my brain showed actually more activity. I was madly in love at the time. Uh, showed more activity than any of these um, people ages 18 to 26. Um, I actually, then he dumped me, so I put myself back in the machine. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was, I was off the map on that one. <laughs> um, you laugh. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so um, uh, I also found a no difference between uh, the homosexuals and, homos and heterosexuals in my population. You know, um, who you fall in love with is probably a very different brain system from how you feel when you fall in love. And um, I don't know why, my homosexual population actually had um, a little bit more of what we call the, of the sweaty palm syndrome, the pounding heart, the um, stammering, the uh, sweaty palms, etc. And I think it's largely because um, there's more barriers in a homosexual relationship. It's hard to stop my hypothesis. And, um, and uh, that can really sustain romantic love. When the person doesn't call, doesn't write, when there's barriers to the relationship, uh, it can last, uh, it can get even stronger. <clears throat> so anyway, I, I, I knew the characteristics of romantic love. I had convinced myself that this was universal, that it could be found in anybody of any age. Uh, um, and uh, I thought that if I looked, I could find evidence of it in the brain. So uh, I assembled a team, a neuroscientist, uh, Lucy Brown from Albert Einstein College of Medicine, and Art Aaron, a social psychologist from SUNY Stony Brook. And I created what was going to happen to you when you were in the machine. And what happens in, in the machine is you do three tasks. Uh, you look at a photograph of your sweetheart uh, for 30 seconds, and you look at a neutral photograph for 30 seconds. So, uh, and so that way you can, you've got your control and your uh, and in the same brain. The problem with romantic love is that you can't stop thinking about your sweetheart. So you got to do something between this positive and the neutral. So I came up with the, um, it's a standard psychological distraction task. Um, and what we would do is we would cast on the screen a large number like 8,421. And they would look at that number and starting um, with that number uh, in their heads, start counting backwards in increments of seven. <laughs> I want to tell you, it drives all the blood in to a tiny little part of the parietal lobe. And you cleanse the brain of emotion, just briefly anyway, and you can capture the brain in this neutral state. So that way, we, we would, you'd, you'd look at first at your sweetheart, then you'd count back, then you'd look at the neutral, then you'd count back. So it was positive, count back, neutral, count back, positive, count back, neutral. Uh, six times, um, collected uh, 12, groups of scans. And then when you put all the um, positive scans and all of the neutral scans together, and they cancel out what they've got in common, you're left with the brain in love. So I'll just tell you some of the most important things we found. And then uh, the most important thing we found is activity in a tiny little factory near the base of the brain called the ventral tegmental area. And this is a brain region. Um, that actually um, makes dopamine and sprays dopamine to many brain parts. We also found activity